Welcome to my monthly segment of games that time forgot. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. This month, I will be taking a look at Do Re Mi Fantasy, Mylon's Doki Doki Adventure for the Super Famicom. Back in 1986, Hudson Soft released Mylon's Secret Castle. It was an action-adventure game that had you playing as Mylon as he traversed a castle's floors as you made your way to the top to rescue a princess. It wasn't an amazing game by any stretch of the imagination, and on top of that, it was an extremely difficult game. Your character controls like he has slippery shoes, everything in the game is hidden, you had one life, and that was it. It has no passwords, it has no continues, although you can access a hidden option to continue. But if you didn't have that information back then, it was a hard game that most of us returned to the rental store before the weekend was over. I was one of those. So while most of us out there are aware of its existence, few of us invested lots into this title. This is probably one of the reasons it did not see its sequel brought to the States. Shame too since the game is nothing like Mylon's Secret Castle. Do Re Mi Fantasy is about Mylon setting out on a quest to rescue his friend Alice, who happens to be a magic fairy that is kidnapped by an evil wizard named Amon. Or is it Amon? But you must collect seven magical music instruments before you can face him. This title was released in 1996, 10 years after Secret Castle and 6 years into the life of the Super Famicom. Pretty sure this did not help in publishers questioning on whether they should release it in other parts of the world. Most of the gaming community had already pivoted to the 32-bit systems and Nintendo even had the N64 coming out on that same year. The sequel is more of a side action platformer that brings back some elements of Secret Castle. Mylon obviously is back, and he still has his trusted bubbles as a means of attack. This time however, the bubbles do not go up or down but rather in a straight line. They are now able to enclose enemies within them, letting you touch them, knocking the enemies out of the screen. Now this here is the only way to properly get rid of them. You also don't want to trap them and walk away, since they will escape their bubble after a few seconds. Unlike part 1, you can also stomp on the enemies, but this only stuns them for a bit. I do love the animations when you stomp on them, it's pretty funny. The enemies will eventually respawn just like in Secret Castle, but you have to be careful as you progress or even stand around to take a breather. The bubbles can also be used to destroy blocks. This will allow you to uncover musical notes and items. Just like in Super Mario Bros, collecting 100 notes will get you one extra life. You max out at 9. Items are also plentiful here in the sequel, so exploration by destroying blocks is not only recommended, but is rewarding to the player. Now, most items can be collected and held onto until you die, while other items can be used one time. The menu screen here will not only show you what items you have collected, but give you a brief description on each one. This is actually very helpful, especially if you don't have the manual. It will also show you what suit strength you are on, as well as the power and reach of your bubbles and how many stars that you have collected. The bubble gum, for example, is used up if you fall and has to be collected again to use its feature, but an item like the winged boots can be used indefinitely until you lose a life. You can find uniforms that allow you to take more hits before you lose a life. You max out at green, meaning you can take three hits before you perish. If you are maxed at green and find a uniform, that uniform counts as 10 musical notes. The good thing here is that you can move back and forth among levels to gather items you might have lost in later levels. Or, sometimes you might have to backtrack to collect stars that are scattered throughout the stages of the world. Collecting 5 stars will allow you to progress in the game towards the end boss of that world. You will also gain certain abilities as you progress and collect the magical instruments.
eventually you will be able to move blocks and even swim underwater. The levels in this game are vibrant and creative. The stages are not only straightforward but traverse vertically as well. I'm not going to show you the later levels here as to not spoil the game for anyone out there wanting to play it. So instead I'm just going to show you the first three worlds. I love the layouts and the platforming here. It isn't anything out of this world or at a difficulty that would make it frustrating, even for me. It's a perfect mix. The levels are also spacious, but not to the point of being extensively long. Lots of them have hidden areas or multiple doors to travel through to get to the goal. It's not a straight shot on most of them. And some of the hidden areas may also contain one of the stars that you must collect, so exploration is necessary. The game is now divided up into seven different worlds. Each world is set in a specific location, such as the first one being a forest and the second being a candy world. The backgrounds and the enemies all fit the themes of that world perfectly. You have some variety of enemies to look forward to, all very colorful and cartoony in their presentation. You'll run into walking bushes, candles, candy dispensing machines, and mice, just to name a few. Their animations when being stuck inside a bubble are done quite well, and you'll have fun anticipating what silly looking characters the game will throw at you next. The end bosses are also interesting and the first boss battle here is a great indication of what type of silliness you will encounter on your journey to save your friend. Unlike Secret Castle, this title does come with a password feature, and the overall difficulty, again, is not something that would turn off some gamers out there. The soundtrack is great. It can go from really whimsical tunes that go great with the levels being played, then suddenly pivot to a more eerie undertone, but without ever sliding too much towards one end of the scale. It might not be an amazing soundtrack that is in par with the likes of, I don't know, Act Racer or Chrono Trigger, but it strikes the perfect balance that you will never tire of hearing as you play the game toward its end. A good platformer can only be good if the controls are responsive and not hampered by awful gameplay mechanics and glitches. I can say with 100% certainty that this game passes the control test with flying colors. On top of the very responsive and tight controls, the items in the game only help in making things easier for you as you play the game. All in all, this is a game that won't leave you frustrated at all. If you die, you can't blame the controls on this one, only yourself. Do Re Mi Fantasy, Mylon's Doki Doki Adventure was the only sequel to Mylon's Secret Castle and would remain relatively unknown until it was released on the Wii Virtual Console in 2008. Yet that version remained in Japanese since it never got a translation. That didn't make it unplayable though since you don't really need to read the text to progress in the game but it does help in pulling you into the overall story a bit more. Years later, however, online fans created a mod for it to translate all text to English on existing ROM files of the game. If Secret Castle was not up your alley, the sequel here might be. It took a different approach from its predecessor and in the process became what I consider to be a hidden classic for the Super Famicom library. The actual carts of this game were once a rare sought after gem for collectors out there, but the demand and pricing has gone down a bit over the years. They are still expensive though, so be prepared to cough up some cash to get your hands on one of these carts. If you have kids, this game right here is one that you can easily tune them into for some solid platforming and in the process show them what 16-bit games were capable of. Now it might not stand up to the likes of a, say, Super Mario World, but then again, few games could. Mylon's Doki Doki Adventure, however, has plenty to offer to keep gamers coming back for more. 
It would be nice if this property was revived again, either as a 2D platformer or even a 3D adventure game. It certainly has plenty of content to offer, at least that's my opinion. So I want to thank everyone out there watching this video, hopefully it was fun as well as somewhat informative. Stay tuned as the World Cup of Bad Games continues on my next video. The Generation 5 tournament will have plenty of consoles and games to offer, but only one will come out on top. Don't miss it. Until then, keep watching, keep gaming, and as always, take care of yourselves.